Hello Lightworkers, how are you today? Welcome to Friday. Well, this has been a very, very interesting week and I want to share some things that have happened to me and some insights that I've had about this. The Maxine. I'll see you. In many ways, I consider myself to be extremely fortunate. And what I mean by that is that my family and I, we have been able to get through the last 12 months pretty much isolated from the madness that has been going on. Yeah, Uh, We don't have to go out to work. We work from home. We homeschool. And so everything has been pretty much the same. But obviously it hasn't been the same, you know, I mean, it's been far from the same. The energy, the atmosphere, the whole thing has been very, very different. But we have been able to keep distant from it. And that's been a blessing. It has been a blessing because I'm very aware of how easy it is to be triggered. I'll give you an example. Um, There's somebody on our, our estate who is clearly um, deeply, deeply, deeply into the mask. And so n- many people walk around our state without masks now. It's, it's very, very common to see people without masks. And it's very refreshing. But this one guy always has it. And when he comes to my house, because he does a little bit of work for us, um, he's got it right up to, to, like, right up here. But when he's talking, it comes down. Right, and this is what I don't know if you've noticed it. This is what happens. It comes down like this, it comes down, it comes off his nose. So, and he talks a lot. So, what happens is he is constantly readjusting it and putting it back up. The whole front of his uh, mask is dirty. It's dirty because he's, he's a, he works with his hands, it's filthy. And he is constantly readjusting it. You know, they do say that you mustn't be touching it. That's one of the recommendations. Um, because you can contaminate it. Well, I mean, it couldn't be any more contaminated. So it kind of like when I'm with him, I'm triggered because I'm watching him. I'm watching his glasses steam up and and then he has to pull it to clear his glasses. He has to touch it and and he's standing next to me. All the air's coming out the side, all the air's coming out the top, all the air's coming out the bottom. Air's coming out everywhere. And not only that, but he's constantly touching it. And, and I think, you know, there's more there's more chance that I'm going to get something from him from that filthy mask that he keeps breathing through. So it's easy to get triggered. And the other day I saw him, yesterday in fact, I was going through the countryside and he was walking his dog and he'd stopped to talk to another gentleman who was also walking his dog. Both of them had full mask protection on. They're in the middle of the countryside. In the middle of the countryside and both of them with full mask protection keeping a safe distance with the dogs the dogs are playing together the dogs are playing together um, but they're keeping the distance and as I, as I rode by I said hello to them but behind the hello was a swear word and that was because there were, there were more than one swear word actually because I was thinking you know on what planet are we living that people believe that that is actually doing some good? You know, and that's keeping people safe. I mean, also, triggered, I get triggered when people finish messages and emails with stay safe. And, you know, or just missing stay home, you know, but stay safe, stay safe. I don't want people, I don't need people to tell me that I need to stay safe. I'm okay. I am safe. I've been safe for the last 12 months. I am fantastically well and safe as is my family so when and you see you see i'm getting triggered i'm getting triggered so i understand about being triggered okay and how we are lucky that we were able to keep out of it but you know what's happened now is that it is upon us the the big push is upon us okay and i've seen some fabulous um data of the the first one in for example in the UK you know my stomping or my stomping ground 63% of the population went for it 
the first time, 63%. But then you look at the second, looking really sick. I think it's I think it's something like 20% or not even that, maybe 13%. So it's looking a bit sick. And when you look at all over, every, all of the countries, exactly the same pattern is coming out, which is a big push. Not so much here in Spain. It was the first time round, I think maybe 35%, something like that. The second time round, maybe, I don't know, 13 very low. And it's the same all over. I mean, the best country is Russia, where there's only like 9% of the population have bothered. And excellent, well done to them. So why this big drop from the first round to the second round? Why? Why this big drop? Well, precisely for what I'm going to tell you. Precisely because the first round was devastating. It has devastated people. And no more so than my family. So I'll give you a look. I'm, this is not a poor me. I'm sharing this because, because what happens is we get a lot of, um, you know, a friend of a friend of my brother's uncle had a problem. This is first hand. So I'm going to share this with you first hand. So in the last few months, terrible things have been happening with my family. My aunt had the first this and then had a stroke and now I mean fortunately it was a mild one but she now walks with a stick she doesn't speak very well okay life-changing now she isn't linking that with that but I am because that's why seven countries um, put it on hold because of the coagulations okay the the, the clots so that happened to my auntie then my brother said, oh, I've just had it. And now when I go to the toilet, I am weeing blood. OK, so then he had to go. And, and I said to him, D you know, please don't put the second one in. Don't put the second one in. Please don't. If you've had a bad reaction the first time, the, there's a high likelihood that you'll have an extremely bad reaction the second time. And and he said, yeah, well, I did talk to the nurse about that. Actually, I, I told her, you know, I asked her about my concerns and she said it was all all right. And then he had it. And then the next day he, 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 it created an infection and blood was coming out. OK, just notice the pattern with blood. There's a blood thing going on as well. And then and then my brother in law had it and suddenly his vision went blurry. OK. I think now it might just be getting back to normality, but I, I don't think completely. And there are lots of cases of people going blind, okay? There are lots of people actually just losing it completely, but very, very large number of people getting distorted vision, blurry vision, whatever, yeah? So that was my brother-in-law. And then my father, uh, had an operation on his prostate, he came out of hospital and, and then a few days later was saying, I feel really bad, I feel really bad, I feel really bad. And I said to him, you haven't put the, that, he said, no. He actually had, but the first one. He said, no, um, we are going, him and his wife, we are going to have it on such and such a date. And I said, please, you have, just come out of hospital you've had general anesthetic your immune system is going to be suppressed please wait don't do it and he didn't answer okay i haven't spoken to him for 40 years he's a jehovah's witness and, I, and i'm expulsed so he shuns me but um because my mum was ill he was able to talk to me so i took the opportunity of saying don't do it okay and um and then the next thing, uh, he sent me a message saying this. This was his message. Um, we have had it and we're both fine. Literally like that. We've had it and we're both fine. So I thought, okay, okay. Three days, four days later, he was in the hospital with erratic heartbeat. Um, and then they had him in over the weekend and they said, it was all right nothing to worry about and then four days later he was back in hospital and one of his legs has swelled up to twice the size of the other 
in the hospital where he was, and he's back at home now, in the hospital where he was, the people on either side of the bed had exactly the same thing and both of them had put the second one in. Okay, so, so I, what I'm saying is this weird thing happening to my family, which is everybody who's, who's getting this is having big issues. Now, that might be unusual that it's all happened to my family. I don't know. I don't know. And I'm sure that other members of my family have had it without any repercussions, but that's just the way it works. But I, want, I wanted to mention it so that you can understand that, that this, if it's happening to my family, it's going to be happening to a lot of families. My, my sister, who's a hairdresser, she hasn't because she's not stupid. Um, she was taught one of her customers was in and she said, my husband had it yesterday. And as soon as he had it, he collapsed to the floor and had a convulsions. OK, so, you know, it's happening all over. Hence the fact that I see that number two is nowhere near as popular as number one. I think people are getting a little bit shocked and there's an awful lot of stories going around about it, okay? But what what I wanted to mention was that that I was extremely triggered, okay? Now, I tried to be zen and, you know, in touch with five-dimensional reality and all of that, and that's all lovely until your family starts falling into pieces around you. Then it gets a bit triggering, okay? And... So I noticed that I was mega triggered. I was really angry. I sent a message to all of my family saying, please, if you, you know, if you haven't had the second one, please do not get it. And if you had had two, don't think about having any more. This is poison. It's an experimental thing. Nobody knows what the long term results are. We know what the short term results are, which are not good which is basically one person in the UK, one person in 167 are having severe effects. So that's what I was, sent them a message and I got really bad feedback, okay? Really bad feedback, like the feedback was, what do you know, keep out of it, okay? What do you know, keep out of it. And, and, and the other members of my family, the ones who hadn't had a reaction said, well, I've been fine, okay? as though that made everything okay, that it didn't affect them, that made everything okay. And, and this, this is my family. So I was very triggered, very triggered, okay? And so I thought, I'm gonna have to go and I'm gonna have to sit down and just have some silence and some meditation and I'm gonna ask the guys upstairs for some help because this is way out of my league, all of this, yeah? So I sat down and, and, and the, they were very understanding, okay? And they said, look, don't worry about it. It's okay. You're okay. Everything's okay. And and I said, I'm just, it's driving me mad. It's driving me mad. And they said something. And as soon as I said it, I instantly calmed down. I instantly calmed down. And it helped such a lot. That's why I want to share it. And they said, you must understand, Gordon, they aren't suffering you are suffering okay and i know it, it makes it's it's very simplistic and you know it doesn't take a brain surgeon to work that out but when you're in the middle of it when you're triggered you don't see that and the truth of the matter is that although that's happening to them although they're going through that they're okay with it if that makes sense they're fine with it they, they, and they don't want to hear you say anything negative about it, even though it's it's clearly a you know a disaster waiting to happen. They're okay. It was me that was suffering. I was suffering terribly on their behalf. You know, and it's and it's because I know, and they don't. And so, just those words of, they're not suffering. You are. Just calm me down, and I thought, yeah. My suffering will not change anything. My suffering will not stop them from doing any stupid things. My suffering will not convince them not to do it. My suffering, the only thing, the only outcome that it has 
is that I will be, um, I will have health problems, mental problems, spiritual problems, physical problems. That's the outcome of my suffering. Now, if you remember, the other message I had was that we have to allow these people to suffer. They have to go through that so that at some point they will wake up. Because, you know, they're okay. They're not suffering. They're going, yeah, it's all right. But imagine, just imagine what it's going to be like when the information actually manages to get back to them that they were used as an experiment and that they knew that this was going to happen. Imagine then how they're going to suffer, right? We, I was suffering because I already knew it. And I was able to let that go because I realized that there is nothing that I can do. Any amount of suffering on my behalf won't help them. Any amount of suffering on your behalf will not help them because they have to suffer, not us. We've done it. We've done our suffering. It's their turn. They've got to suffer and we've got to let them. Okay, and the problem that we've got and the problem that I had is that I was watching them and they weren't suffering and I was. And it's frustrating when you know, when you're the boy saying the emperor's got no clothes on and everyone is laughing at you and saying, don't be ridiculous. It's very frustrating. But then imagine how those people felt when finally they realized that they had been blinded and that the little boy who had had probably nothing of the schooling that they had or the life experience or anything that he could see it and they couldn't now the story ends where they laugh at the king and the king goes away and he's in disgrace right but i wonder how many people in that story then had to self-reflect and say how is it that i missed it for those who did the, the video with me of the F's, how many of you missed all, some of the F's? Lots and lots, I did. And lots of other, the feedback I got with lots of people also missed the F's. And it's that reflection. It's that looking, something has happened and you've missed it. In fact, you may have even laughed at the people that actually suggested that this was the case. And then later on, you see it. That's when the shit storm happens. That's when the, the, the shithouse emotions start to flood in. That's when you start to suffer. It isn't in the moment where they, they truly believe that they are doing something for the good of mankind. That's why they're not suffering. They believe it. But when they find out that it was all a lie, when they find out that they've been played, when they find out that their health has been damaged, for no other reason than money, power, and, and worse. That's when they'll suffer. And that's when we will have to be there to help them with that suffering. Perhaps if you feel strong enough, and if you don't, well, fair enough, let them suffer because they've got to go through it anyway. Yeah, does that make sense? So from now, I've decided that um, there is nothing that I can do I will continue to sing my song and dance my dance. I will because I've got to do it. But I'm not going to be attached to the outcome. I'm not going to be attached to the fact. I'm not going to expect that they're going to listen to me because every time that I have talked to them about it, they have still gone on and done exactly what they want to do. Their path, their thing, their choice. Yeah. And the only thing that we can control is us. And I know, and obviously my immediate family. And so I know that nobody in my family will have anything of that poison put in it put into them. You know, and, and that will be to the to the point of, of you know whatever I have to do to make sure that that doesn't happen. But beyond that, it's everyone, every every man and woman for themselves. Literally. It is. But you know all of that apart, and I know that kind of sounds a bit sort of uh, doom and gloom, but boy, do you feel it? Are you feeling it at the moment? I am. What a change at the moment. What a, what a change. 
There are so many things happening that are just absolutely incredible all over the world. All over the world, there is, the people are revolting. We are revolting. And there's no stopping it. There is no stopping it. I watched a beautiful video of, of a, hundreds of parents who mobbed the school and the board because they wanted uh, masks to be optional and they wanted no tests or no tests. And the board or the school board got up and walked out and they resigned because they wouldn't do what the parents wanted. And so the parents then voted in new board members and they voted that the mask was optional and there would be no testing. Now that is people power. That, I mean, there's hundreds of parents from the same school zone. Now that is power. That is wonderful. And that is just a tiny example of so many things that are happening everywhere. So we're on, we're on a great path. Everything's going fine. Everything's going wonderfully well. And everything is happening exactly the way that it should happen. So just keep uniting. Keep forming your groups. Keep coming together. Keep supporting one another. And keep looking for ways of spreading the light and spreading the joy and spreading the hope. Because we're going to get there. We're getting there. And it's beautiful. So have a lovely weekend. And I'll see you on Monday.